Hey guys, Hamsterboer here with a new video and today we're going to talk about what I like about the Burning Crusade. So if you don't know already, the Burning Crusade is my favorite era of WoW and there's several reasons as to why. Let's start off with the introduction of the new talent trees. Now I know that technically this was part of vanilla as this was implemented right before Burning Crusade launched but for the most part this talent tree is almost always associated with the Burning Crusade so let's just roll with it. Alright, so what about the new talent trees? Well, let's put it like this. Back in the days of vanilla, you were very limited in the choices of specs and what you could choose if you wanted to join an endgame raiding guild. You want to raid as a druid? Go resto or go away. And the same applies to almost every other class. Palins were forced to go holy, warriors were forced to go protection and the list goes on and on. In today's private server scene, people are more open to certain classes rolling with different specs as we learn throughout the years that we are not that limited in terms of the viable rating specs. It's just a shame that way back in vanilla retail there was a negative stigma attached to many specs so you had no other choice as to go with the cookie cutter rating spec or not get into a rating guild. Then the new talent trees came and the burning crusade launched and with those new talent trees many of the specs that were looked down upon were finally viable. After years of being forced to be a heal bot in raids as a shaman, you could finally go wild with a new revamped talent to become more than just a healer. Finally you had the chance to shine as a lightning bolt throwing elemental shaman or a mighty dual wielding enhancement shaman with wings free procs for days. Not only did the new revamped talent trees make certain specs viable again, it also allowed for some rather unusual specs. Matter of fact there were so many of them that I have an entire video series dedicated to those specs. For instance the Smite Priest, who instead of their shadowy counterpart, uses holy damage to DPS their way to the top. Another one that comes to mind is the Shockadin, that stacks spell damage to dish out nasty holy shock crits and more. The new talent trees were a welcome transition and suddenly the very limited possibilities now seemed endless. So let's move on to the second point, the availability of gear. Let's face it, back in vanilla the amount of gear you could get through questing was, well, limited. And the gear you did get usually wasn't that good. For instance gear with spell damage was rather scarce and you really had to go out of your way to find a handful of quests that did give you some gear like that. For the most part though, you were shit out of luck. You almost always had to resort to just farming dungeons or raids and getting the odd item or two from professions or reputation grinds. And then, with literally one of the first quests in the Burning Crusade, it became quite clear that they threw that whole idea to the window. You entered the Dark Portal, reported to your base and with the first killing quest you had to do you could obtain a staff with 35 spell damage. I was flabbergasted. This quick into the expansion and I already found an item that was on par with some of the epics that I got from raids. This trend continued all the way till level 70 with tons of gear being available for each class, spec and whatnot. There was in fact so much gear to get from simply questing that I have tons of gearing up guides from multiple classes and specs on my channel that show you exactly what gear to get. Yeah, the abundance of gear was one of the best things for me in the Burning Crusade. No longer were you forced to grind dungeons. You could very easily just go out of your way to do some quests and find some decent gear that way. Hell, if you knew where to look, you could even get gear from quests that is better than the gear that dropped in heroic dungeons. Again, Blizzard gave us more possibilities and personally, I loved it. Speaking of gear, for almost every dungeon you did you got reputation with a certain faction and from that faction you could get some amazing gear. And yes, the reputation grinds were often considered tedious and boring but it offered you an extra way of getting gear rather than just relying on what bosses drop and hoping you win the role. Alright, time to move on to the third point, the arena. Now, just like the revamped talent trees, this was implemented in a later stage of vanilla, but it really came to life in Burning Crusade. Now, personally, I'm not that huge on PvP, but I definitely did my fair share of it in vanilla and Burning Crusade, and I love the old school battlegrounds of Warsong Gulch, Arathi Basin, and Alteric Valley. There was a problem though. Most of the time, there weren't any proper one-on-one -on -one or two-on-two -two fights. It was usually a bit of a clusterfuck, especially in Alteric Valley. With the arena though, the PvPers finally had an even playing field and they could really put their skills to the test. Not only that, I also like the fact that for some of the gear you could obtain, you had to get a certain rating. 
And honestly, I think it's a better system than the old Honor DK system because with that, the amount of time spent grinding Honor is more rewarding than the actual skill of the player. For instance, you could, back in vanilla, do Battlegrounds non-stop and eventually you would have enough Honor to get to rank 10 and get yourself a full set of PvP armor. With the raiding base gear, you could spend as much time in the arena as you wanted, but if you were not improving your skills, learning about the other classes and becoming a master of your own class, you would never be able to get a high enough rating to get that gear. It's a very skill rewarding system and I love it. Then we move on to the fourth point, professions, because they also opened up a world of possibilities. Jewel crafting was introduced in Burning Crusade and it allowed you to create gems that you could put in items that had open sockets. It really boils down to having more customization in terms of items, being able to focus more on crit instead of hit, spell damage instead of crit and whatnot. This was a great addition as we all know that getting hit cap is the first thing you should do when you're raiding and being able to stack hit gems really helps in getting there. Same goes for PvP, where you focus more on gems oriented with stamina and resilience rather than other stats to give you more survivability. It's not just dual crafting, the other professions got some updates as well and they gave you the ability to craft some absolutely wonderful gear. Gear that was sometimes better than some of the stuff that dropped in entry level raids like Karazhan and Gruul's Lair. For instance the Spellfire set was an absolute must for any fire mage or the Nether Strike set being an absolute must for elemental shamans. Once again it provided you with a different way of getting gear and it was gear that was totally worth getting which made it awesome. So let's talk about the last point, the raids, because the raids in Burning Crusade were awesome. Not just because of the boss fights and the raids itself, but also the lore behind many of the raid bosses and how we knew most of them from playing the previous Warcraft games. We've all seen them, we battled them in Warcraft 3 and now, years later we finally got the opportunity to lay siege to their strongholds and destroy them once and for all. Many iconic characters were part of the raid bosses in the Burning Crusade and I think that really helped into making the raids amazing. However, the raid that stands out the most for me is Karazhan. I've done Blackwing Lair, Molten Core, Ankiraj, and even Old Nextramus. And all those raids had giant halls or huge caves with tons of space to move around. And then you got to Karazhan. A raid with lots of small corridors, staircases and whatnot. It was a breath of fresh air to see something so compact that really kept you intrigued on what was around the corner, what mobs are going to be there and if I'm going to pull trash if I move forward even an inch. There was a sense of excitement that with one wrong move you could pull an entire pack of trash mobs and trust me, that happened. A lot. It's not just the compact design of Karazhan that I liked, it was the whole atmosphere. As if you step back in time into a Baroque church with that typical harpsichord music playing in the background which definitely gave me some Johann Sebastian Bach chills the first time I heard it and there is a fair share of dissonant chords in there giving in a mysterious and somewhat creepy vibe that totally fits Karazhan. I know I'm getting all music geeky here so let's just talk about my favorite boss of that raid. The Opera event. You basically step onto a stage, then Barnes the stage manager welcomes the audience to the show and introduces one of three boss fights which are all based off of famous fables. The Wizard of Oz, Red Riding Hood and Romeo and Julia. The fact that you are basically on stage performing in front of an audience makes this in my humble opinion one of the most original settings for a boss fight I have ever seen and I still enjoy this counter very much to this day. All in all I had an absolute blast in raiding in the Burning Crusade. I didn't get to do all of the raids, but I had a great time nonetheless. Well there you have it, several reasons why the Burning Crusade is my favorite expansion and why I spent so much time playing that version of the game. It probably doesn't surprise you to know that I have a ton of characters on the Burning Crusade server from Phoenix, many of them having tier 4 items or even better including my druid who also has a full set of PvP armor. Not to mention the fact that I'm looking forward to Hellground's return and the new Warmain server. So in short, I love the lore and the freedom we got in this expansion. We went from a limited set of options with almost no flexibility to a world of possibilities. A world of possibilities that I still hold very close to my heart. And that's all I have to say for now. I'll be back very soon with another video, but until then, I want to thank you for watching. I'm Hamster Wheel and have a good one.